guys, Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic. I'm making this video specifically to address several unanswered questions about my finances and a few other rumors. I've been uh, trying to make this video or planning it to make it for uh, several weeks now, along with the other one that I keep messing up with is my uh, updated budget. I'm still working on that one, but I want to do this one first so that I can kind of address uh, some of the stuff that I've been neglecting and uh, keeping from people. So I'm going to come clean. First of all, many of the drama at the Evergreen State College was embellished or fabricated for a purpose. Uh, the, um, the thousands of calls and uh, email complaints are all true, but after talking with uh, police services on campus and Olympia police, it was brought to my attention that I could create an unlisted video and then I could post the link to that video on Facebook to custom audiences in order to kind of pinpoint where it was coming from because it was clear that it was taken from that social media site. I posted several videos that uh, for some reason still exist out on the internet under other people's names about uh, being caught sleeping in my RV on campus, uh, being kicked out of the master's program at Evergreen, uh, being caught using my financial aid money to improperly buy an RV. Uh, these statements uh, were not true, and uh, that's why they don't exist on my page right now, because they were used to uh, track the haters, and it worked. So at the time, I had over 700 uh, friends on Facebook, and uh, over the course of about a week, I would post that link to that unlisted YouTube video on Facebook, and then change the custom settings to a specific group of 50 or so people, and then wait 24 hours. Uh, eventually, I was able to pinpoint the exact source, tracked it down to a past uh, fellow student in another class that still attends Evergreen to this day. Uh, they claim to just absolutely despise me, quote, getting away with stuff all the time, and... Uh, just hated the fact that uh, I was succeeding and getting away with all this stuff. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, <laughs> I never slept overnight in my RV on campus because I know that's breaking the rules. Um, I, as far as the motorhome purchase, it was for my class and of course I have all the paperwork in order for that. I had to obtain a, I had to fill out a special form for um, extending my cost of attendance at Evergreen uh, for my program. So in this program I was supposed to be making the documentary, the short under 20 minute documentary. And uh, so the purchase of the RV and all that was in line and totally okay with campus. Oh and then being uh, rejected from the master's program completely false again. Now um, I have deleted those videos even though originally I think they were po posted to the public at the end. Uh, I had deleted those from my channel and now Pretty much all of those videos have now been uh, downloaded when they could be and uh, then re-uploaded to another YouTube channel called Nomadic Fraudmatic. It's against the rule to uh, re-upload somebody else's copyrighted work and I'm still in the works of getting YouTube to uh, delete the account, delete the videos. However, uh, I don't know, they're, they're, they're still out there and they're not meant to be viewed because they were used in you know, a private little sting operation that was very successful in my part. But this experience changed how I deliver personal information to the public here on YouTube. Changed me forever and probably in a good way. I could make a hour-long video uh, addressing and correcting all of the rumors that are out there about me on other social media uh, sites and anywhere else online, but I'm not gonna give it the attention because Doing that is just going to prove to people that no matter what they say, they're always going to get a reaction from me. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to address all the crazy stuff. If, if you want to go join that world, you can probably find this stuff. Uh, just going to remind you if, if you care, don't believe everything you hear. But there are a few important things that I do want to address here. First of all, I am not the father of any children. 
that I am neglecting secretly. I just have a cat. I didn't rob a Little League baseball team in Tacoma, Washington. I've never coached a Little League baseball team. I do not borrow Jax, my cat, from a friend in order to put in my videos to get sympathy. He is my cat, has been from the day he's born, and he is my best friend. I am not an alcoholic. I would ask that you please understand uh, the disease of alcoholism before you label anyone an alcoholic. It's really offensive. Uh, I know a lot of people like to just see somebody drink a beer and then say, that person's an alcoholic. Okay, alcoholism and drinking beer are not automatically related. Okay, alcoholism is a serious disease and I know close friends who have that disease. It is a disease that you cannot control. You have no control over it and they have no ability to stop drinking and for it to affect their life. Okay, just because you see me crack open a beer, a 12 ounce beer here at the desk at night and make a video and then not open another beer even though there's 11 more in the fridge I'm not an alcoholic okay I've gone months without drinking a sip of alcohol I've gone 13 days now without drinking alcohol and I might just continue the end of the year just to spite people but please if you're one of those people who does not understand what that word means do not call someone an alcoholic. It's really rude. I didn't fake my MRSA infection in order to get sympathy and to one day create some crowdfunding campaign to pay for the infection. Uh, I have full coverage insurance through Obamacare. I have no copay, no deductible. Everything is covered 100%. Every visit, every single day, and it was back-to-back -back days going in to have it lanced, drained, and repacked. All covered. Didn't cost me anything, didn't fake it, and I'm not asking for any money. Okay, now I want to talk about some facts. I need to refer to my computer because I don't want to get the facts wrong as I have in other attempts to make this video. Uh, but l let's state the facts here. Uh, I started a crowdfunding campaign in March of this year, 2014, for a specific amount to purchase a specific solar panel kit for $627. After 60 days, my fans had donated a total of $3,155. Of the extra money raised, I contacted the funders for ideas on spending the rest of the money. Nobody, not a single person, asked to have that money returned to them. Instead, most wanted the money reinvested into the RV. That is how I got the starter fixed, the toilet fixed, and the rest was used for gas. Again, accusations that claim I, quote, raised $3,000 and then bought some cheapo solar RV kit are completely false and inaccurate. Completely. Many of you already know that, but some people are still confused on that. Uh, go back and look at the details of that campaign, please. Second, the other campaign. Uh, it was started for filming the extension to my documentary, Static to Nomadic. And it never kicked off, honestly. It never kicked off out of the state of Washington. Despite the fact that I asked for $5,000 and I got $5,113, well, minus several hundred in taxes and Indiegogo fees, the cost of the trip rose right away, with necessary RV maintenance, including the tune-up, the carb cleaning, the new water heater so that I could bathe, tires, the remaining tires, and the roof reseal equipment. Not to mention the gas money that was actually spent in those three months of preparation and smaller trips. So the money that I asked for was for gas and food, and it was used for that, plus cost associated to make the trip physically possible. Now without those expenses, there still is no trip. I honestly underestimated the cost of, of being roadworthy in my RV, and everything cost more than expected. 
at the time, <laughs> it seemed like the most reasonable way to spend the money when my back was against the wall, and that was the only cash I had. I figured, based on the first campaign, how people understood that I had to, that I needed to put money into the RV, that people would understand that I was doing everything possible to make my RV roadworthy. And that's not the case. I'd been called a fraud, a thief, a con artist, and I got sick of hearing this stuff and other harassing comments on YouTube, and I couldn't even begin to keep up with correcting all the rumors. Now the fact is, the money is gone. It's all gone. Used inside this RV. I have sold my solar panel kit, my guitar, my PS2 system, and all 120 games, my RC car and all accessories, and my Canon Vixie is currently in a pawn shop. I've been just staying afloat, barely, lately. And honestly, <laughs> my RV would otherwise be in a wrecking yard right now, and I would be living in the bed of the truck if not for having the campaign money to keep my wheels moving, even though it wasn't as far as I wanted to go to finish the documentary. Now, can I legally do that? Am I, aren't I legally required to just make the trip happen and find another way to make the trip happen? Uh, well, yes, of course I looked into this. Uh, the fact is, the campaign focus is still funding the documentary and finishing the documentary, making it feature length so that I can get it into those film festivals and get it some attention. That's the focus. Uh, people want to draw on the fact that uh, the money that was raised for gas and food during the process of making the film and the fact that I never left Washington State. I couldn't. I physically couldn't. My RV wasn't ready and I had to put money into the RV to make that happen. Now, my focus and my attention has to be for the documentary. That, that was the whole goal. Uh, the gas money, the money was used a little differently in order to keep me afloat during the process. And I've still met several other people for great interviews and got some great coverage for the documentary, although it's still a work in progress and I have now gone past the time where I originally said that it was going to be finished. I'm sorry. I'm still working on it. I'm being honest here. I'm being as honest as possible, uh, which is something that I've kind of neglected in the past about this situation. But uh, again, I'm trying to find the right words to say it because I feel like people aren't understanding what I'm saying, or they're twisting my words around, or they're twisting the campaign words around. And again, and again for, for, for this campaign, these are going to be live forever. They never disappear. So go to Indiegogo and look at my Static to Nomadic documentary funding, and please review that because I'm trying to do the best in both situations. I'm not trying to prove that I didn't do wrong. I'm trying to prove that I did the best I could in both circumstances to uh, complete the original goals and, 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 and to appease people in both worlds. And seriously, I'm being perfectly honest. Okay, I didn't take the money and go to Disneyland. I didn't go to Las Vegas. I didn't buy some brand new $5,000 RV, okay? The money really was used to help me make my documentary. I promise you, it was used. Those trips and all that awesome filming that I did this summer on those smaller trips, well, that was all I could do based on the fact that I was having to put money into the RV to keep it running and to keep certain appliances uh, working for me so that I could live. Uh, it is going to happen. Okay, and then that brings me right to the coffee cups. And again, I have to quote this. So. Yes, some people's coffee cups arrived broken inside their box. Some people have also claimed to have never gotten theirs. And yet over 300 people are enjoying theirs and took pictures of it and thanked me. But I tried to rectify the broken ones by resending out every last cup that I have here in the RV. And those still unsatisfied have nothing but hateful things to say to me now. Now, I have the original receipt from the post office from when I went in and had everything mailed. It is literally like 20 feet long receipt with everyone's address on it. I keep that so that I can at least have some kind of proof and stability and say, I tried as hard as I can. And I, and I still tried after that. I, I remailed several cups. 
but I cannot fix the few remaining problems even if I had money to purchase more cups or if people were interested in doing anything more than harass and threaten me. Now, for me, there has to be a moral of the story. Moral of the, moral of the story for me. Don't ask for money from the public. Don't do it. I have no intentions to do it in the future and I strongly urge anybody who thinks that that it's a good way to make life better. Um, having solar was great. Having the support to be able to try to finish this documentary was great. But every misstep and every little change of direction and everything that's happened in between has just been a nightmare for me. And honestly, I mean, without the two campaigns, I wouldn't be filming this right now inside of this Tioga. I, I promise you, I promise you that. I would not still be in this RV right now if it were not for those two campaigns. Uh, that's a that's a problem that I, I need to address, okay? I would not have had the money to make the repairs to this RV and continue both times, you know, with the solar panel and trying that out all summer. And then being able to take these smaller trips and film some interviews and get some more documentary footage for my my, my other documentary that I'm, that I'm trying to finish, uh, it, it never, I wouldn't be here today without it. So I thank everyone who contributed from the bottom of my heart. You you changed my life, and I like to think that it's it, it's good, but a lot of hate has come from it because uh, people feel that I have not met my obligations. Uh, personally, I, I'm trying to show you that I've tried, at least in the first campaign, 100%. I, I, I don't understand how there could be any confusion there. Uh, yet there is. I don't know. I, that's all I can say. In the second one, the fact is, Eric didn't take his trip. Didn't go to Washington. Or he didn't go out of the state of Washington. Um, why? <laughs> uh, and like I said, the money is right here. It's it's It's... This is the money. <laughs> this is the money that was supposed to get me out farther to do the interviews. I'm thankful that I had it to be able to keep this RV going and continue the original goal of finishing this documentary, which will get finished. Now, we're late. I want to have it done by the end of the year, and I'm still meeting awesome people and creating some great video. But... I'm not going to ever ask for money from anyone else again. And obviously I've talked to you guys about um, my personal life and all the details. I encourage anyone who's watching me starting up an RV life and thinking about filming, I definitely encourage you to separate your public life from your private life. Everything, your, your, your job, your, your family and friends and everything because all it takes is, is something like this. You know, something where you didn't quite go the exact path you said you're going to go. And then people, well, people get really mad at you about that. Which I can understand, you know. It's, it's money out of their pocket and they wanted to help. But again, uh, you did help. Now, I, I, can't, I can't clarify that enough, you know. I didn't go out and splurge and buy hookers and, and beer with, with the money. The, the money saved my butt. And that's a story in itself. One I'm actually trying to put in to the, the rest of the documentary is the fact that, you know, without the YouTube support, without the campaigns, uh, I mean, I, I, I couldn't even stayed running. So uh, it's important. Uh, I, I, I know I'm rambling off here. I have so much more I want to say, and I don't want to make this an hour-long video, like I said, but I I'm I have to make some, some serious changes in my life and I'm, I'm, I'm working to do that um, I actually have big news that I'm gonna share in a in another video here in a couple days but uh, I'm I'm broke I'm broke I'm not asking for money relax look I am um, my my bank account is overdrawn not because I overdrew it but because the the $12 fee thing kicked in and that put me over the edge so I'm in the red, in the red 
and I've got like $80 to my name, which I could easily just go to the gas station and put in this, and it wouldn't even fill it up to full, or put half of it here, half of it in the truck, uh, and then I have no source of income. Like, I don't have a job right now. I have absolutely no income. It's almost terrifying. And at the same time, uh, one of the only real things I like doing is making YouTube videos. And I feel that, you know, my audience isn't going to respect me unless I'm completely honest about everything. But with that honesty, I think you still have to understand I can't give out personal information anymore. And I have to be careful about that. But um, I'm going to leave comments on for this video, at least for the immediate future here. Uh, because I want to get back to socializing with people and I feel that people might have something to say. Um, I've addressed everything that I feel people want, might want to hear. Uh, maybe some people don't even care about that, but it is important because uh, the campaigns are the things that have kept me alive and the reason why you're able to see this video right now. So, um, I know that was a lot to take in, and um, I just had a great night tonight. I met James with uh, Wonderlust Estate, trying to get his video uploaded and then work on this one, getting this one uploaded while I have uh, Wi-Fi, and then uh, and then we'll and then we'll move on. But I want to let this sink in and uh, and I, I, again uh, and, and encourage some communication here in the comments because I think that's healthy for any channel. I think it's healthy for all of us to to talk honestly because honestly I have been ducking this for months. So, um, I'm sorry to everyone. I'm sorry that things didn't work out the way I'd hoped. I'm sorry that over the course of time, the money couldn't go where it was supposed to go, or where I originally planned for it to go and asked for it to go. Um, I'm sorry that I made some choices without speaking to every single person in person about where to go but maybe put yourself in my shoes is there somebody out there that would have done the same thing you know after the first campaign there was extra money and it went into the RV and it was great this time there wasn't extra money but in order to make it happen I've had to like every dollar is just added up I mean I'm not out eating at restaurants and doing all this I don't know I'm just rambling now but uh I tried. I'm sorry I made so many people disappointed and, and made so many people hate me, but uh, hopefully this video gets you back talking with me at least in a civil matter. Hopefully we don't have to deal with the name calling and I'm fat and I'm a homo and I like wieners and I'm a con artist and all that. Let, let's, let's focus on the facts. Uh, and if you still, for some odd reason, think I'm... Uh, not being truthful about something or want to call me names, uh, explain to me why you want to call me names. And then maybe I can try to answer that or some other viewers can try to answer that if it's still confusing. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna call this, uh, this case rested right now, in other words, on, on my end. I'm still going to communicate with people about it on this, uh, comments on this video until it gets, unless, I mean, unless it gets weird. Uh, and if it doesn't get weird, and if we can all be civil and uh, understand that I'm trying to be honest, uh, I'll reopen comments everywhere else and, and on future videos. And, uh, yeah, love you guys, and, uh, all right, talk to you later. Hey, it's Eric, along with Jax. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get the latest updates, and feel free to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.